In this lesson, we're going to apply what we've learned about the IVGen add-on to create our branch network. And I'm going to separate these branches into two parts. First, the internal structure, and then the external structure. What I'm trying to do internally is to populate the volume of our rhinoceros shape with the larger diameter branch portions, like the trunk and the primary branches. And then externally, I just want to cover the entire shape of our model with a shell of branches. So to begin internally, let's see, I'm going to reposition uh, and snap my cursor to a foot. And uh, then if I go ahead and add some ivy, add ivy to mesh, let's disable our leaves and make this a little more readable and update it. Uh, we can see that our ivy is growing on the outside of our geometry as can be expected. However, for the internal structure, I want the shape of our model to limit the reach of our internal structure. So I need to flip this model inside out. And uh, first, uh, to give me visual feedback that this has been successful, I'm going to disable double-sided in our object data panel. Let's turn that off, tab into edit mode, and with everything selected, let's scroll down our tool panel till we see the normals uh, options and let's flip the direction. Now you'll notice our model is now black, but if we uh, navigate our camera to the internal mesh, we can see that these faces are shaded appropriately. But uh, since we flipped the mesh inside out, these black faces are the negative normal direction. So if I delete the ivy that we created and then um, re-add it, shift A, curve, add ivy to mesh. First, I've got to make sure my geometry is selected. Now you can see that the ivy grows internally. So um, let's see, uh, on our rhinoceros mesh, I'm going to jump over to the object panel and uh, switch our maximum draw type to be wire. However, uh, we're going to have a problem if I want to change any of these settings. Uh, for example, if I change random seed, this is a modal operator that's running to govern the ivy. And if I change a random seed, um, because it's modal, it's going to revert our maximum draw type back to textured, whatever setting it was when I created the ivy. So I'm going to have to get rid of that one more time and uh, change our maximum draw type to wire. This way, even in shaded mode, I can see through it and add that ivy one more time. Now, if I tweak anything, um, it will stay the same visually. So uh, let's start tweaking our IV settings uh, because with this internal structure, I'm trying to get the trunk, which needs to be significantly thicker. So first thing I'll do is change my IV branch size, uh, multiply it by 10 to go from 0.001 to 0.01. And then I will also um, increase the IV size from 0.02 to 0.05. And let's update that ivy. We can see that that's much thicker and uh, feels like it could support a bush of this size. Well, actually it could probably stand to be a little bit bigger, but I'm going to repeat the creation process for each one of my legs. So there's gonna be four trunk structures within this uh, overall topiary. And maybe I can increase the uh, trunk diameter just a bit. Let's change it to 0.015. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. Now, um, obviously we want this to, to extend a lot further. So our uh, max IV length is not nearly long enough. Let's change that to three. I think that that's pretty good. Or hmm, maybe I'll have it extend a little bit further. Let's go to five. How does that look? Okay, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Now notice that the IV is still clinging to the side walls of our geometry very closely. Whereas um, being the branches, I would prefer that they populate the volume and simply stop at the edges instead of clinging to them. So for this, let's change our max float length and uh, let's increase it to, let's say three. And we can start to see a little bit more departure from the side walls. How about we change it to five? And still a little bit more, but not nearly enough. How about we lower our max adhesion length and go to 0.01. Yeah, now we're starting to get somewhere. A lot of our branches are starting to separate from the sidewall. What if we um, 
tweak our adhesion weight. Let's go from 0.1 to 0.01. And no, that's not really what I'm looking for. Let's go back to 0.1. And let's see, perhaps I can um, lower the primary weight so that it's not trying to reach this hump so much, the highest point in our geometry. Let's change that to 0.2. Yeah, this is starting to um, be what I'm looking for, but I think I went too low. Let's go to 0.3 instead. Yeah, this is better. Notice how much of the volume it's uh, taking up inside of the geometry. And if I duplicate this IV growth for each of my legs, we should have the majority of our rhinoceros shape um, the volume of it filled. But um, let's see, there's too many vines, too many branches in there. It's way too cluttered. So um, let's change our branch probability from 0.05. Let's go to 0.02, see if that decreases the branch amount. And it definitely did, but um, we lost a lot of our volume, the reach of our branches. So um, you can see just how much these settings affect one another. Sometimes a little more than you expect. So you have to really tweak these settings and, and uh, get some experience with them because they're not always gonna do 100% what you expect. What if we try to change our random seed value? Okay, so that extends our volume significantly. Let's decrease our branch probability to 0.01. Try and cut that in half while still maintaining the volume. And that's not too bad. I really like that this feels like um, a branch structure. So um, I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Remember, I can always delete it if I want to, but um, there's not quite as much volume ideally as I would have, but as I move the cursor to another leg, I'm kind of hoping that these new generations will um, fill up the majority of the volume uh, combined with one another. So um, let me add a new piece of ivy. There we go, that one's looking pretty good. Yeah, I think I'll keep that. And just maintaining these same settings, jump around to each of my legs. And uh, whoops, I didn't mean to update the geometry or the IV, I meant to add a new one. But that didn't happen, so uh, that still looks pretty good back there. I'll just come back to the uh, other front leg, add a new piece. Let's see, that one, I think I wanna decrease some of the value, some of the reach. So let me undo that generation. Before I lose my settings, add uh, this leg up here. Shift A, curve, add Ivy to mesh. Yeah, that still looks pretty good. And then go back to this leg because I want to tweak some of my settings. Add a new piece. And basically I want to decrease the primary weight because I don't want it to reach so high so quickly. Let's try and decrease that to point, let's see, point two. Perhaps decrease my IV sized to point oh three. And uh, wow, that filled a lot. But um, I like how it's filling, I just don't like how much. So perhaps decrease branch probability from 0.01, let's go down to 0.005, cut it in half. Let's change my random seed value to zero. Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's uh, turn off our model and see what the internal structure looks like. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Um, unhide the model and then let's add another piece under the belly. Add new ivy, okay. I'm going to make that extend a little bit further. So uh, increase our ivy size back to 0.05, update that. Let's see, perhaps increase the primary weight to 0.3. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Let's add another one right at the bottom of the chest cavity. And switch this around because I want this to take a lot of volume. How about I decrease my IV um, size because I remember that that added significantly more branches. So um, 
04. And yeah, we get a whole lot more in there. Though I do want it to extend a little bit more towards the hump. So that has to do with the primary weight. I will increase that. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Now we have a lot of the volume being filled and while it's maintaining the shape of the rhinoceros. So that's great. Now what about the head? That's the last area I need to address, the last large uh, bit of volume. So um, let's see, if I put my cursor at the bottom of the jaw and add a new piece of ivy, we can see that it still tries to grow towards the hump, but I want it to grow towards the front of the face. So uh, in order to manipulate this behavior of the ivy gen add-on, I'm going to uh, undo that generation. And uh, at this point, all my previous um, IV pieces are uh, just beveled curve objects. So I can combine all of those together, or actually I won't combine them just yet. Instead, I'm going to select all of them first, then shift select my rhinoceros model and control P, I'm going to parent my vines to the model. And now I can rotate the model, though first let me make sure my locations and rotations are zeroed out, which they are. Now I can rotate my model to change the highest point, which is where the IV objects are going to try and grow to. So if I rotate it around like this, now my hump isn't the highest point, but instead my head is the highest point. So let's uh, move my cursor to, um, let's see, I'm gonna have it start generating amongst my other branches. So uh, I can just manually manipulate the position over here in my view panel and uh, under the 3D cursor drop down. Let's move it in the Y direction, holding shift. There we go, that's a good uh, generation spot. And let's try adding a new piece of ivy. And there you go, notice how it tries to grow into the face. Um, but I need to decrease the ivy size. Let's go to uh, 0.03 and also decrease the primary weight from 0.5 to 0.3. Let's update that ivy. And uh, yeah, it's trying to fill up the face. How about we change the random seed value? That's pretty good, but it's not quite right. So um, let's instead rotate my model a little bit more, about like that, and then try adding that IV again. Okay, it's getting closer. Change the random seed value. Let's try a couple different versions. Yeah, that's the kind that I'm looking for, right? Like that. Now uh, let's parent this new piece to the model. I can simply drag to set the parent in my outliner and then Alt R and G to restore the model's position to how it was originally. And this represents the internal branch structure that I'm trying to create, where the majority of the volume is filled with branches, just like you would see in a real bush. Now I just need the external shell of branches, though um, you can see that some of it is quite dense and uh, the bevel of the curve is a square. It's just a four-sided bevel. Um, so we can go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and combine all these objects into one. Select them all, Control J, since they are all the same object type. And if I tab into edit mode, I can come into some of these uh, more dense areas if I want and select you know, a bunch of vertices, then hit Control L to select the entire curve and I can delete those if I want to decrease some of that congestion if you want. I'm actually gonna leave it as is for now, but we should have a couple stragglers. If you do have some stragglers like this guy up here, we can either delete the entire branch which uh, I think I'll go ahead and do. It doesn't seem to be super important. We can delete it like that, or we can just delete the portion that is uh, sticking out of our boundary object, our uh, rhinoceros model, just by deleting uh, those vertices by themselves. But uh, in general, it's a pretty good um, network of internal branches. I'm pretty happy with this. I will go ahead and rename this new object and call it branches internal and go ahead and save this version and now we can start working on our external shell 
So let's hide the internal ones and then select our model geometry and reset the 3D cursor to start with one of the legs and add a new default piece of ivy. Let's turn off our leaves and also increase our branch uh, diameter from 0 0.001 to 0 0.003. Yeah, yeah, that looks better. And uh, let's also increase our ivy size to 0 0.05. And how about the uh, max IV length? Let's change that to four. And um, yeah, I think that that's pretty good coverage. Let's hide the model and take a look. Yeah, our branches are spread out pretty nice. And uh, yeah, I think that's a good uh, combination of settings for the external shell. Now I just need to duplicate the IV generation on several parts of the mesh. I'll uh, start on another part of the same leg and see if we add a new piece of ivy. Uh, yeah, it, it covers up a different piece of the mesh, so that's good. Now let's move on to another leg. Continue adding new pieces. We don't want too much overlap. Um, as you can see right here, it gets um, really dense. Maybe that won't be a problem. Um, I'll leave it for now, but I can always come back and delete it. Now let's add another piece going up the back side. Okay. How about we change the seed and try and get it, instead of going up the uh, rear end, I'm trying to get it to grow up the back of the leg. So let's see if we can make that happen by changing the random seed. And I'm not really having much luck with that. So how about instead I change the position of the cursor and try again? That's a little bit better, yeah. Just continuing around to the other legs adding new pieces, that looks pretty good. Continue adding, let's see, I don't like where that one's placed. Let's change our random seed. Yeah, that's more like it. Just trying to get a very even coverage over the entire model, which can be hard to see with the wireframe. So periodically, it's a good idea to hide our model and just look at our vine uh, creation. Let's continue adding pieces. Yeah, I think that that coverage is working out uh, fairly well for now. But at this point, I've kind of reached the limit of what I can cover um, with the model rotated at this angle. So at this stage, I will select all of my IV pieces, go ahead and combine them with Control J. Let's rename this branches external and drag it on top of our model to set it as a child of the model. And now, um, like I did before, I wanna start rotating our model so that the peak height of the model is different. In this case, it's like I did before, I wanna grow vines to encompass our head. So uh, we will adjust the cursor to start about at the chest and let's add new ivy. And yeah, that's a good first spot. Then we'll switch the cursor, continue adding new pieces. Um, though I didn't see where that one went. That wasn't too good. It seems like a glitch. Let's uh, add it again. There we go. Hide the model, see how the head's being covered. That's pretty good. Now let's address the other side. Moving our cursor, adding new ivy patches. Yeah, that's a really good one. Covering uh, our horn in there. Very good. I like the way that that's covering the head. Now let's uh, combine these uh, new branches with the other external branches with Control J combining them. And I misspelled external. There we go. Now unhide the model. And I'm going to rotate this guy to be completely upside down so that I can now grow vines into our legs. Um, actually, I'm going to reset my rotations with Alt R and uh, Alt G. And then rotate with, uh, let's see, median point, rotate in X 180 degrees. Then just move that above the ground plane just to remind me that I am upside down. 
and uh, continue adding some vines, though I will hide my other external branches for now, just so I can see the coverage on the legs. Shift A, curve, add ivy to mesh. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Maybe add another one here. Yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted it to cover the chest. And uh, just move my way around for each leg. There we go. Pretty good coverage overall. Though um, there are some areas that are feeling kind of light, like up here in the shoulder and the front of the hump also on this other shoulder. So let's see if I can't fill those in, unhide my model, and uh, keep in mind I am still turned upside down. So let's make a visual sense of that and try and line up a new piece of geometry, I'm sorry, a new piece of ivy to cover this shoulder. Switch around our random seed. It's getting closer, not quite there. Let's move our cursor uh, to the right a little bit. How does that look? Yeah, that's great coverage. Do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, that's looking much better. Now to address the hump, I need to rotate my model. So we'll combine these new um, ivy patches with our other external ones and uh, Let's see, clear out rotations and translations to return the model to the original position and see if I can't fill the front section of the hump with a new um, branch patch. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, that's great coverage. And um, let's see, I think on the side of the face over here, I could use a little bit a little bit more coverage in that area. So um, combine that latest uh, branch patch, rotate the model one more time. This should be it. And try and make that side of the face the highest peak in the geometry. Add a new patch. And yeah, I think that covered it first try. Awesome, love when that happens. Combine that with our other collection, control J, zero out our rotations. And uh, yeah, now all we have to do is groom some of these stragglers that are now poking through the mesh. We can do that by simply tabbing into edit mode. And uh, I can either select vertices or circle select the segments that are sticking out. And then we'll try first by selecting the entire curve and deleting those. I think that's uh, going to work pretty well. Continue grooming. Getting rid of these stragglers. And then for the feet, we have a whole lot. So um, for that, I'm going to use circle select. And uh, I'm not going to select the entire curve this time. Uh, first, I'll make my selection. I'm just going to grow the selection. So control plus on the number pad and then delete that segment because I don't want to lose the volume of branches that I have in here. And if I undo that and hit control L, you can see that that gets rid of a lot of the volume. So instead of that, I'm just going to delete the portion that's sticking out of the geometry.
And there we have it. Everything's uh, fairly groomed. I can do a little bit more polish, but I wanna see what um, all our vines look like together. So this is the external patch, and then this is the internal. So yeah, I think it looks like a bush structure. I think we've achieved that. Let's see if we can't get like a silhouette. If I go under the shading tab, let's change from multi-textured to GLSL and then enable um, textured mode. There we go, now I can see a silhouette. And uh, yeah, I think that really mimics uh, what we see in real life with a topiary. And now we just need to add our leaves, though um, I may go in here uh, and you know polish out the horn because we don't really have any vines growing in there, uh, nor in the ears. So I'll probably go back and polish out a few areas, but um, in general, this is the process for creating the branch structure. In the next lesson, we will add the leaves and then uh, kick off a final render.